because you've um, you've seen plenty in the A League, I guess. Where does that noise rank in terms of uh, the best you've heard in your time? Derbies are the best. Derbies are the best. It's as simple as that. You look around the world. You know, everyone sitting here is a football lover, and we all grew up on that, whether it be on ABC or SBS or whatever, but we, we understood what derbies meant around the world, whether it be in South America or, or Europe. We, we live for it, and it's important that we teach that to the next generation, next generation, next generation. And I understand we haven't got a footballing culture as such, but games like tonight, you know, epitomises what can be done you know, if we if we understand and put the game first, you know, but that's that's up there. The derbies are always up there, and it's easy for me to sit here and, and talk this way because we're the, we're the winning side. But irrespective, I've been on the losing side last year as well. Derbies are the best, and uh, we don't want to overcomplicate it um, with new teams coming into the cities. You know, I think they're there, and I was at another Melbourne club last year, and, and they, we try to create something, but it's really hard. This is the original, this is the best as far as I'm concerned. What does it say about Milos Ninkovic's character after all that he received during the week and tonight to, to come up with, with that moment, that assist um, for the winning goal? It's exactly why we brought him to the club. Exactly why. I was surprised that you know he kept playing on the left-hand side of, of midfield the last couple of years, particularly you know where you've got to do so much leg work and, and, and chase down right backs. And, and I, I would have played him as a 10. He's a classic number 10 for me. You know, the, the way he finds space and, and things like that. And, you know, I'm glad that he didn't have many minutes last year because, you know, the first thing I said to him, I said, you're not playing the left-hand side with me. You'll be playing higher up. I'm going to save your legs without the ball and make sure that you're fresh enough to do what you can do with the ball. It's a little bit different. He hasn't played that position for a number of years, particularly not in this country. But um, his leadership... He, he won us the game, I, I thought, because of the way he started. Every one of his teammates knew what was going on this week and, and if he had put his head down and was hiding when the game started or his touches weren't there or he wasn't you know, fighting without the ball, uh, the players would have seen that. But the fact that he did the exact opposite is the reason why we won the game. I, I thought he was superb and everybody followed him. That's, that's why he's uh, not just a quality person, a quality, quality player, but that's why we brought him to the club and that's why he is the leader that he is. What were you thinking after his miss, Roods? And also, you know, the fact that he followed up seven minutes later with the assist probably speaks a little bit about his temperament. And, and his character. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and tonight their, their character showed. And, you know, last week was just a disaster. Um, and we just cannot afford to do to do that. You know, I was disappointed. I had to look within myself as well and reflect and find out, you know, why we, we did that because they're not. that's not the culture that we wanted at this club. They're not, they're not the, the behaviours that we wanted. And they made amends tonight, not just because the derby, first and foremost, about what happened last week. But when you come, you know, to, to a, a, an environment like this and and it was brilliant, you know, their, their fans, you know, came out in, in numbers and, and made the environment all that much sweeter and, and better. But, yes, he should have scored. It's the first thing he said, um, you know, when I, when I took him off. But I had to remind him that because of the way he played and because of the way he started, that's why we played as a team the way we did tonight, you know, and you let them. So don't worry about um, not scoring. You know, I didn't buy you to score, uh, you know, to 10, 10 or 15 goals. I brought you here for, for other reasons, but, you know, to also contribute. And, and he started every game and he's playing almost 90 minutes every game. And we had an agreement, you know, that I'm, all, I'm a very open, honest coach. And, and, and I speak very, very honestly and openly. And I, and I, I don't like to lie to my players. And, and, and that's all I asked for. And I told him, if we have to have that discussion, if you're not starting one week for whatever reason, I'll be letting you know. Um, and that's the kind of relationship that I have with all the players, and especially Milos. Uh, the other player you got from Sydney FC in the off-season, Caelan Neuenhoff, I mean... A, can you believe that they let him go? And B, he seems to just be blo blossoming week on week. There's a hell of a player there. Yeah, yeah, and and it was it, and it and it was relatively easy. Would you believe? You know, I, I've always liked Callum. You know, when his name was on the list. You know, when I when I got to the club and signed it a longer term. You know, he was one of the first guys that I wanted, um, and and he was wasn't offered anything. Um, we've changed a lot at the football club. You know, I've certainly got. A position I'm very grateful, you know, that I've got the trust with my boss, um, uh, Paul Letterer, to allow me to to create a staff around me um, and and uh, um, I guess pillars at the football club where this club needs to go in terms of being 
one of the best, if not the best, in the, in the competition. So bringing our head of high performance was also important. The club never had that, and always when something is new, um, people don't really know why. But you look at Cassini Yengi, who hasn't had, who's had a, a checkered or broken last three or four years. He hasn't missed a beat. He's always up there. Maybe last week was just a, a little hammy, but you saw what he did tonight. And Callum Neuenhoff, just because his body wasn't responding, you know, we've created an environment where you know, we believe in what we do. And, and he hasn't missed a beat either. And he's a young kid with a very mature head, and football-wise. And again, you know, I, I know he keeps putting the performances in, but he's such a level-headed kid that it's, it's our job to protect him and make sure that, you know, football's first and, and the noise is, is external and, and, and secondary. But... It's not just about you know those two, um, in, but I understand the question because of the, the game tonight. Um, you know, the, the, there's others there. You know, there's a young Zach Sapsford who was a top goal scorer in the NPL who I watched many times. Um, sat there and watched the NPL games and watched them and watched them and I don't know why he didn't get a chance either even to to train with the first team. You know, and 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 he's come on for me as well and he's another good young young kid from from that club and. Like I said, uh, at the same time, we're, we're creating our own MPL Institute, so to speak. And, you know, I've got a lot of passion for the young kids and, and, and we're going to create uh, that MPL sector or that MPL space where, you know, we've put a lot of investment in there and we're going to make sure that they're, they're the future for our football club as well. Because I'm like a lot of people in terms of the recycling, you don't necessarily want to do that. You want to create and, and produce your own and, and we're starting to do that. How valuable is it to have an experienced veteran in Marcelo really lead the defence? And how important is he off the field as well? Incredible. That's why I made him captain. And then he was the reason why he was the last, and I've said this before, part of the puzzle for me. I needed a really strong leader. Um, and he certainly is that. And you now I've said this when I spoke to him, I knew he was going to be the guy for me. You know, he was so open to, to coming here and his attitude and is, is brilliant, first class, and you see him out there tonight. He, he loves the occasion. For him, he just he was just dusting it up his shoulders. He want to have a bit of fun, and no different to to me. You know, um, we are in the entertainment industry. Uh, we don't we don't forget that. All right, you guys love it as well. So it's 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 important we give you those little bites or that you guys are looking for. But Marcelo is the same. You know, he's loving football. He's loving life here in Australia. Loving Sydney. Loving the football club and the environment that we've created. Um, but you need guys like that because. We, you know, when you look at your both teams, you, these are the sort of games where you need those hardened professionals to look after the Callum Neuenhoffs and the younger ones around you, I, I believe, anyway. You know, Gabriel Clue, no one talks about. He's a young guy who's played in the A-League for the first time and, you know, he's, he's just getting big, better and better. So you need that, that, that mix. But Marcelo was great. I agree with you. He was fantastic tonight. Marco, you've been quite strong on sort of restoring the trust in the Wanderers fan base after some difficult years. Is there a hope that sort of seeing a crowd like that and a game like that, that it might have a flow-on effect in getting some hype around this team. Yeah, I've said it before, we need them. We, bet, we, we, we really need them. Tonight was, a, well, tonight was for them. Tonight was important that we, you know, we, I told the players the story of the West, you know, and they, how, how many of them came here um, as immigrants to a, a beautiful country like ours, not just for freedom, but to start a, a new way of life. And, and they were... It wasn't easy for them, and I, and I know this story, um, you know, because of the language they spoke or the food they ate or the faith that they believed in, and, and, and they were kicked around from pillar to post, looked down upon for a long time. And they had a choice. They could have packed up and gone back to their homeland, but they stayed and fought, and their story is our story. And we needed to remind them that this game's not just about us. It's bigger than that. It's about them, you know. And, and you know, when it's tough... They went through a lot of pain, but they showed a lot of courage, the fans, in terms of their story, and that's what we needed to show tonight, that, that um, our story is their story. You know, we're, we're together with them. And just the last one. Michael, you've been, uh, obviously, Melbourne Victory away from home now, Sydney FC away from home. Does that sort of adjust your expe expectations for the team, or are you still just taking it you know, no, week by week? The process? No, our, our expectations is, is to is to understand the culture, the environment, and, and, and be relentless with that, and it's still very early very, very early, but the signs are decent for such a team that it would have been easy if we were on five or six points after six rounds because of the amount of changes that we've made to the club. And that's not just the purse playing personal, that's, that's the staff around me, that's everything, you know, from, from top to bottom. You know, there's been a huge amount of changes. So you know, it's, it's, it's been a good start and they're going to give them an extra day off 
after tonight's game and they were cheering, so they deserved it. It's important to reward when they, you know, good behaviour as well, and and um, they left everything of themselves out there. And like, like I said, we haven't really spoken about the game as such. We thoroughly deserved tonight's win. I really believe that. You know, I thought we played some really good football. We start to understand now the kind of football that we want to play, the combinations. You know, playing through lines. You know, and also having a bit of diversity and playing in behind when we have to. Uh, a bit of variety is important too. But um, you know, I was I was happy with them and really happy with them tonight. Okay, thanks, guys.